I wanted to make a video for everyone down south in Texas. I've had an influx of comments on all my well-related videos and they all ended up kind of being the same thing. So due to the weather that y'all have got this freak snowstorm, no one down south is prepared. <clears throat> They're wellheads for this kind of temperatures. So a lot of people are running into the same situation. So I wanted to make a quick video here showing you exactly what your problem is, could be possibly. Um, if this isn't your problem, I recommend you go to my channel, go to the playlist section, find a uh, well Q and A and click on that. I have dozens of videos, all well related that are very helpful. And if you find my videos helpful and you do live in Texas, or you were hit and affected by this freak freak storm. If the video helps you, please share it on your social media. That way other people in your area can also come across this video and it can help them as well. So if, if you're watching this video, it's because you don't have water and you're trying in your last resort to figure out why you don't have water. Now with the amount of people who are probably without water down south, you probably can't get a hold to a plumber because they're all gonna be swamped. So that's probably why you're here. Well, to let you know, I am here to help. I do not live in Texas. I am on the East Coast, but if you watch any of my other videos and look at the comments, I comment and reply to everyone. Anyone who needs help, I will help them. Typically within 30 minutes to six hours, it all depends on how my day is going. So with that being said, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get to the video. I know this is gonna be a little crude, only because there's no sense in me sitting outside at my well just to explain it to you I can show you right here verbatim so what we have here is your typical well so if you go out and you see your well you're gonna have a white pipe sticking out of the ground which is this piece here which is your well casing now what most people are, are running into a problem is this pipe here which actually feeds water to your house this is what's freezing okay so you're gonna get an ice obstruction in this pipe here and your pump cannot feed the, the water pressure to your house to the switch. So the switch isn't gonna turn off because the water isn't getting to it. So what ends up happening is you have your pump down here and typically the pressure in your house is somewhere around 50 to 60. Well, the pump actually has the capabilities of pumping 200, 215 PSI. So when it has a ice obstruction up here, the pump is down here running. And this drop pipe, being that it is submerged in water 20 or 30 feet below the surface of the ground, this water pipe here is not rated for 215 PSI. Granted, it may be 200 PSI black roll pipe. It may be 400 PSI um, white PVC pipe. But here's the problem that most people don't understand. This part of your pump is an electric motor. When it sits there and builds 210 PSI for 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 24 hours because the ice obstruction in this pipe here will not allow it to, to satisfy the pressure switch over here at the house, what happens is the electric motor becomes extremely hot and it will eventually turn itself off on a thermal overload. Now that's upwards of 200 degrees. Now, you've, you've been without water for a few days, and if you've left the breaker on, this is what has happened. Your electric motor has gotten so hot, it has transferred the heat into the water. Now the water in this area is 200 degrees. Well, your, your drop pipe here is plastic, so your 200 degree water has now softened this pipe and then on the inside of it, the pump stack has built 200 PSI. So what happens with plastic when it gets hot? It gets pliable. So what you have, you have a burst right here. And what's happening is it's taking that water, it's, it's taking all your pressure out, your pressure's going out, it's going right back down, it's going right into the intake of your pump, and it's sitting there doing a big giant circle. So. If you watch any of my other videos, you can do the pressure switch test, which is by flicking the contacts with the plastic cover. If you notice that you actually have a spark, you know your pump is running, 
or you can go as far as going out to your well and testing the wire nuts that are at the top of your well to see if you're getting 240 volts to your well. If you're not, then the pressure switch is what's bad. But if you're receiving 240 volts at the top of your well, it should be reaching down to the pump. The pump is probably running. If you have covered your well, put heat tape on it, put a lamp under the cover, you know 100% definitively that you have provided enough heat under the cover to melt the obstruction and now you don't have water even after you flip the breaker on. Well, or maybe let's just say you get a little bit of water. That's what everyone keeps saying. I'm getting a little bit of water, but eventually it stops. And, and that's what's happening. So the pump can build some of that pressure up and send just a, a little bit to the house. But what's happened is you've got a burst right here, right above the pump, six inches to one feet. I've seen it time and time again. So what happens is if you were to turn the breaker off and open a drain at the tank, or if you actually have a, a spigot right here that you can hook your garden hose to, if you were to open that and little dribbles of water were to come out, I would say open it, put your hand against it, and then have someone turn the well breaker off. Now what's going to happen here is you're going to get a suction. Instead of water coming out, dribbles or whatever, if someone turns the well breaker off while you do this, the water that is inside the pipe, because there's a leak, the water is going to go down the pipe. And that's going to cause a suction effect. So that's a, a telltale way to, to diagnose if you have a busted pipe down in your well is to open a spigot somewhere, stick your hand to it, and then turn the power off. If you hold it there for about 30 seconds and then pull it off and it kind of gives you that sucking noise, you know 100% that you have a busted pipe above your well. Now, I've, I've helped... I say roughly 30 people and that's the same diagnosis that I've came up with time and time again. So I wanted to make this video strictly for y'all down in Texas, down south, who got hit by this bad winter storm. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I'm strictly here just to help y'all. I do uh, well-related work as a profession, so um, I do have a little bit of background in it. I've been doing this 16 years and I've been backed by a family who's been doing it for 38 years. So I understand the workings of a well system. Now, I've also seen on other people's situation where their drop pipe here is frozen. And not all wells look like this. This is how it's going to be done down south because typically y'all don't get below freezing. Now, if you're in another area, you might have a pitless adapter where the pitless adapter actually hooks up below the surface of the ground. So your drop pipe would actually come through the casing and then it would go to the house. Well, what's happening there is their drop pipes are freezing. The reason why the drop pipe's freezing is because of the vent. So it's zero degrees outside. As you use water, the water level in the well goes down. Well, as the water level in the well goes down, the vent pulls air in. Well, it's pulling in that zero degree or 10 degree air, and it's freezing the drop pipe down here. So the reason why wells typically don't freeze is because they're covered. So if you cover this whole apparatus here, your whole well system, with a nice insulated cover and then put dirt around the edge to where it's sealed up like an igloo, the water down in your well is always 55 degrees. As in turn, the air pocket above it is going to be 55 degrees. So as you use water in your house and the water goes up and down, it's actually breathing air in and out of the vent from, from the area above the static level. So it's taking the, the air under your cover might be 35 degrees. It's pulling that 35 degree air and it's mixing it down here with 55 degree air. You stop using water in the house. The water level goes back up and it's pushing that air out of that vent, but it's trapped underneath your insulated cover. As long as you don't allow any of the excess outside air to get <clears throat> in there, the vent will actually be the reason why none of it freezes. So people say, leave a faucet dripping, running water doesn't freeze. Well, we all know that waterfalls can freeze. It's not that leave a faucet open, the dripping water isn't going to let it freeze. What it is, is every 30 minutes, if you let a faucet drip overnight, every 30 minutes, the pump's going to kick on, the water level's going to drop some, and then the water level's going to come back up. 
And what it does, the well takes a breath. It breathes in some cold air and it exhausts slightly warmer air. And that gets trapped underneath of the well cover. And that is what prevents it from freezing. So in, in conclusion here, if you are in Texas, if you were affected by the deep freeze, if you do not have water right now, turn your well breaker off because all you're going to do is either you've already busted it here or you're going to bust it or you're just deadheading the pump, which is eventually going to kill the bearings in it and it's just overheating it and it, there's no need for that. Um, if you go to my channel and you find my other videos, they are very helpful at, at self-explaining. I'm very thorough at, at what I do on my videos to help people. I'm just here to give professional guidance. Um, if you have any questions, you need help, please feel free to comment on this video. If you liked it, if it helped you, please share it on your social media. That way people in your area, your friends who also live down there who are affected by the storm can get this information, can get to my channel, and can fix their, fix their well uh, doing it themselves. I know that the, uh, the amount of plumbers down there, I'm sure they can handle it, but after a freak storm like y'all had, it's going to be very hard to get someone out there that week or the next week or whatever the case may be. So many of y'all are going to be coming to YouTube to try to fix your own water. So that's what this video is for. This video is for y'all. There's dozens of other videos on my channel that are well related. So if you go to my channel, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. That's all I ask. And um, just share this video if it was helpful. That way it can help others. Thank you all so much and God bless.